Our mirror cognition drew a particular attention on its following pieces of news published on its website. The Indian Army wants to get new wheeled armored personnel carriers. The Turkish Army is about to get Azizgard Sonkar drones armed with a 555mm machine gun. Kongsberg will supply the Danish Army's Piranha 5s with protector remote weapon stations, and the US Marine Corps' utility task vehicles receive multiple upgrades. The Indian Army newest request for information is inviting vendors to submit proposal for 198 wheeled APCs by 17th of February 2020. The vehicles are meant for a reconnaissance and support road in Punjab and Rajasthan. The 20-page RFI lists technical parameters that leave Russia and the US out of the game, as the BTA 82A and the Striker both fail to match the Army's needs. The appeal of 6x6 or 8x8 APCs must be transportable by planes like the Ilyushin 76 or C-17 Glowmaster 3, be amphibious with a falling speed of 10 km, have a minimum power-to-weight ratio of 25 horsepower per ton, be able to reach a top speed of 80 km, have a mechanical self-recovery winch, be armed with a 30mm cannon, a 7.62mm machine gun and two anti-tank guided missiles in a single turret with an additional eight missiles carried inside the hull along with a portable ATGM launcher. The Indian Army's preference of foreign suppliers over local manufacture is deep-rooted. It rejects local efforts aiming at producing a wheeled APC, the Tata WAP, comes to mind, but no single manufacturer outside India can deliver the vehicle without imposing huge costs. Suppliers will be challenged to fulfill all of the above characteristics unless a joint venture is agreed upon with other companies. The best known wheeled APCs in Europe such as the French VBCI and the Anglo-German Boxer are inadequate. They aren't amphibious and would need a customized turret with the Indian Army's specific armament. Also seeing the turret and protective countermeasures to other further complicates the acquisition process. The Indian Army's request for information describes something whose cost will be exorbitant. The Turkish Army is about to be equipped with a drone armed with a 5.56mm machine gun, possibly coupled to a 14mm grenade launcher. This will make the Army the first in the world to use such a system. The Sonka armed drone system is the first Turkish-made automatic shooting stabilized armed drone. The Sonka drone can carry out missions within a 10 km range at an operational altitude of 2,800 meters. This drone can carry 200 drones of 5.56mm to be fired by single shots or 15-round bursts. It's hard for a drone to shoot accurately, partly because of the difficulty of judging range and angle, and partly because the recoil from each shot significantly moves the drone, affecting the aim for the next round. Sonka has two systems to overcome these challenges. One uses sensors, including cameras and a laser rangefinder, to calculate distance, angle and wind speed and work out where to aim. The second is a set of robot arms that move the machine gun to compensate for the effects of recoil. Assis Guard claims its Songa has an accuracy that corresponds to hitting a 15 cm area from 200 meters. That is accurate enough for every bullet to hit a human sized target at that range. A human drone pilot picks the target by putting crosshairs on it using a screen on a remote control. Kongsberg Defence and Aerospace has signed a contract with the Danish Ministry of Defence Acquisition and Logistics Organisation, the DALO, for delivery of the Kongsberg Protector Remote Weapon Station to the Danish Army. The system will be integrated on Denmark's new fleet of Piranha 5 8x8 armoured vehicles. The Protector is the world's most fielded remote weapon station, with close to 20,000 units delivered to customers around the globe. Denmark is the 23rd country to select one. Let's remind that General Dynamics Europe Land System signed a contract with DALO at the end of 2015 to deliver 309 Piranha 8x8 armor personnel carriers in six variants troop transport, command, ambulance, engineer, motor carrier, and repair. The first of all these Piranha 5s was delivered to the Royal Danish Army in March 2019. The US Marine Corps Polaris utility task vehicles are undergoing several upgrades designed to improve the safety and performance of the vehicle. Using critical feedback from Marines and taking inspiration spanning the automotive industry to desert tracing, engineers and logisticians from the Light Tactical Vehicle Program Office at Program Executive Officer Land Systems have been working diligently to research, test 
procure and implement changes to the UTV. These changes include high clearance control arms, new run flat tyres, floorboard protection, a road march kit, a clutch improvement kit and an environmental protection cover. We bought a vehicle as a commercial of the shelf solution, so it's not going to have everything we want right from the factory, said Jason Engstrom, lead system engineer for the UTV at PU Land Systems. Since PU Land Systems started fielding the UTV in 2017, the US Marines have consistently pushed the limits of their vehicles, said Engstrom, in many ways beyond what is expected or imagined with a typical of the shelf solution. This week, Navy Recognition has noticed a particular interest on its website from its followers for the following valuable topics. Damon Shipyard is now building landing ship tank for Nigerian Navy. Indra signed a contract with Lockheed Martin to manufacture radar for F-110 frigates. And Nava Group has been selected by Dutch MOD for next phase of Rallus class submarines replacement program. Speaking on Monday at the keel lying ceremony for the new landing ship tank at Diamond Shipyard Sharjah in the United Arab Emirates, Chief of Naval Staff Vice Admiral Ibok Etibas said the new ship would play crucial roles in Nigeria's maritime security. The bid for this project was highly competitive as several other shipbuilding companies tendered for a construction. According to Damon, the landship vessel has been designed for amphibious operations, transport and logistic, but secondary tasks include maritime security operation, humanitarian aid, disaster relief, search and rescue, operation commands, mine countermeasure and hydrographic survey operation and support. The 1.3 tons LST-100 is 100 meters long, has a maximum speed of 60 knots and a range at 50 knots at 4,000 nautical miles, with an endurance of 15 days. A bow rams allow the direct transfer to and end from beaches and is rated to 70 tones. The internal ramp is rated at 30 tones and the stern ramp 70 tones. Indra has signed a contract with the US company Lockheed Martin to supply the main components of anti-air warfare radar antenna for the future F-110, one of the sensors that will make this frigate one of the most advanced of its kind of the world. The value of the contract amounts to over 150 million and will last for seven years. This subcontract signed with Indra is within the framework of Lockheed Martin s band Raider contract and will supply the critical elements to support the digital transmission and reception of each of the radar elements. This is the first of the contracts that Indra expects to be awarded during the construction phase of the five frigates to equip them with the sensor that their built-in mass carries. It is a fully digitized system composed of hundreds of small independent blocks or tiles. Its flat facets laid out around the mast minimize the ship's radar profile. Indra and Lockheed Martin have been working for the Spanish Defense Military and Navy for 10 years in the development of advanced solid-state radar technology. Thanks to these digital tiles, this system will be able to operate as if it had several radars working simultaneously which gives its multitasking capability. The Netherlands Ministry of Defense has selected French company Naval Group to enter the next phase in the selection process for the submarine replacement program. In November 2014, the Dutch Minister of Defense announced plans to replace wireless class submarines in 2025. The Dutch government has announced its intent to buy four submarines to replace walrus class ships last year. The contract is estimated to be worth around 3 billion. In November 2019, French Naval Group has presented its Barracuda family submarine with transfer of technology for Netherlands walrus replacement program at the NIDV's Defense and Security Exhibition in Rotterdam City, Netherlands. 
On December 13, 2019, the Netherlands Mart announced that three parties are invited to enter the next phase of the Netherlands Submarine Replacement Program. And now for the air sector, Turkey's latest armed drone Akinji completes first flight. The Royal Australian Air Force receives the latest P-8A Poseidon aircraft. And Saab flies first production Gripen E for Swedish Air Force. Turkey's newest armed drone successfully completed its first flight test, the manufacturer Baker announced. The drone also passed its first engine test back in September. Operated with two turbine engines, the Akinji can carry nearly 1.5 tons in useful load. 900 kg external and 450 kg internal. Flying at an operational altitude at 40,000 feet, the Akinji can stay in the air for 24 hours. The platform can be controlled via domestically developed satellites. The Akinji will also be equipped with an electronic support pod, air to air radars, satellite communication system, barrier identification radar, synthetic aperture radar, and meteorological radar all designed and developed in Turkey. The platform will operate with various ammunition configurations. Baker officials have said that the drone may be equipped with air-to-air -air missile systems domestically developed in Turkey and may be deployed in air-to-air -air missions. The drone is expected to officially start serving Turkish security forces in 2020. The 12th and final P-8A Poseidon arrived in Australia on December 12. The P-8 is being operated in the anti-submarine warfare, anti-surface warfare and shipping interdiction roles. It is armed with torpedoes, harpoon anti-ship missiles and other weapons, and is able to drop and monitor sonar buoys as well as operate in conjunction with other assets, including the Northrop Grumman MQ-4C Triton Maritime Surveillance. The P-8A Poseidon and the MQ-4C Triton unmanned aircraft systems are replacing the AP-3C Orion aircraft. Saab has flown the first series production Gripen E aircraft for Sweden, the company announced on December 3. An image of the aircraft 6002 flying in a new splinter three-tone grey camouflage pattern reminiscent of the Swedish Air Force's green and brown scheme from the Cold War was released by the company. A week before, the second Gripen E test aircraft took off on its maiden flight. During the 33 minutes long flight, the pilot carried out a number of actions to validate flight characteristics and various test criteria such as the software, life support system and radio system. The next phase in the test program for Gripen 39.9 is testing of the tactical systems and sensors. Sweden is due to receive the first of the 60 Gripen E's before the end of the year with deliveries running through 2026.